trade gun for just about anything. They're like gold. Dead serious, they're like gold. What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I've got a pretty long story, I have a feeling. I don't even know exactly how I'm gonna condense this yet, but I'm gonna try my best. shifter you have to like stay in the throttle completely if you let out of the throttle it'll half shift like what just now happened only i can miss gears on even a motorcycle no one else can miss gears on a sequential trans but me i miss gears and fucking anything anyways i gotta go ride around i'm going to take some pictures of this bike so that way i got some time out instagram content by the way if you're not following the instagram page you got a lot of followers on that page honestly and a surprising amount of time by the way how do you guys like these story time videos do you want to see more of them if so comment down below want to see less of them you want me to do away with this whole series probably not but it seems like you guys love these so anyways today's topic is going to be me in high school slinging guns not necessarily slinging guns but flipping guns buying and selling guns i was uh yeah it's a it's a, it's a good story uh let's see a lot of people saw me in high school as like a super rich prick who had a lot of father's money daddy's money whatever you want to call it uh and that's just really not the case i might have been a prick yeah i don't i wouldn't consider myself as being rich but i had a good bit of money in high school and the reason why is really just because i worked my ass off through high school i'm not even gonna sugarcoat it like i really did anything possible to make sure that all of my skins were going to be met nothing was really handed to me i didn't have a free first car like most kids get for their 16th birthday i didn't have a paid journey through college if i wanted an xbox or something i didn't just get that I didn't ask my parents if I could have wanted to go pick up an Xbox. Pretty much everything aside from the bare necessities I paid for, and I'm so happy that it is that way. I've said that a ton of times, but uh, along with that, I had to figure out how to work for what I wanted, which was great because it led to a lot. And I definitely am going to instill the same thing in my kids. Along the journey to success, a lot of people have to figure out where they're going to make money. How are they going to make money? I think anybody that really wants to be successful enough, I say this a lot, you can do it. It just depends on how hard you want to try and how bad you want to try try how many times you will try fail get up and keep trying and this is one of the times that i tried something had a little bit of success ultimately failed and uh yeah and uh the first real thing that i had i guess started flipping was i flipped a subwoofer <laughs> ended up like i said before getting into cars to where i could start flipping cars and bikes and that went great and there was a lot of money to be made with it but the hard thing about flipping cars is that whenever you buy a car and you do stuff to it obviously the profit is going to be there but the problem is that how can you sell it quickly that's the biggest thing is you got to find something that you can sell quickly because it's not about how much money you make it's about how much money you make in a set period of time cars and bikes became a little bit less attractive to me because of how long it took to sell cars mainly the bikes i really never got out of because bikes sell quick people love bikes people go through bikes people crash bikes every day and buy new bikes every day it's just there's a constant market for sport bikes and so i was loving the bike thing but the car thing really wasn't working out that well cars just it just takes too long to sell and eventually i ended up getting into trading guns and literally all of this happened because i had my first pistol at the time and i didn't have cash for something that i saw for sale on facebook marketplace but i wanted it so bad and i learned a very valuable piece of information and that was that guns honestly are pretty much priceless you are not going to lose money on guns and guns also the cool thing about them there's a spark plug in the road how the hell did somebody lose a whole spark plug in the road but anyways guns are one of the rare commodities that you can trade for just about anything at all times everybody likes guns typically at least around these parts where we're from in louisiana southern states you know everybody likes guns though you can trade guns for just about anything they're like gold dead serious they are like gold and the cool thing about guns is that <laughs> you can always like i said find a buyer because as soon as you buy a gun let's say you buy a pistol on a good deal for 300 dollars and you can flip it for 450 you can sell that pistol no kidding in uh, an hour if you know the right people so slowly but surely because of the facebook pages that were around at the time we had this page called cajun swap shop cajun swap shop was essentially a page where 
you could buy and sell whatever that you wanted. And on that page, most of the time was guns. And so I would go through and I would find ARs, I would find pistols, I would find literally whatever, and we would go pick them up and I would flip them. And eventually it got so big that I was making more money flipping guns throughout the week than I was at my really good paying job doing concrete with Daniel. We were working night shifts, 12 hours, seven days a week. I mean, it was crazy hours making really crazy money. And it was even crazier because the, like I said, the guns that I was flipping were making way more than the, uh, than the concrete job that I had was at the time. So I started really taking that a little bit more serious and started really wanting to flip guns. And I think really, truly, that's just because I've always loved guns. I'm sure you've probably seen that now from this channel. I am just a gun fanatic. Absolutely love guns. Obsessed with them, collect them, can't get enough. And uh, yeah, so that was my pretty much my, my ticket to get able to pay for college because that was all I knew at the time is that I wanted to go to college and I wanted to pay for it without taking out a bunch of student loans because I really didn't like taking out loans. I still don't. I don't want money on anything except for my land. So I pride myself in making sure that finances are one thing that I, I prioritize. It started off pretty small and I would probably sell a pistol or two here or whatever. I'd make a few hundred bucks a week. And then it ended up getting to the scale of where me and Daniel, after we were getting off of work at 7 a.m., would drive hours at a time sometimes to go pick up bundles of guns that people were selling, that collectors were selling. That I mean, any time that I would find a gun for sale, I would ask if they had anything else for sale because most people that sell guns or have guns for sale or anything, they'll typically sell other ones. And uh, so I would ask for what they had for sale and if they would cut me a bundle deal. And a lot of the times I would get really lucky with these bundle deals and make it to where I could flip it and sell these guns for quite a bit of money. And I was honestly making thousands per day. It was pretty freaking crazy, but my luck ran out before too long and I'll tell you about that in a little bit. So one day I had just traded some wheels for two AR-15s. This was the fun part. I didn't live with my parents anymore, and my mom had absolutely no idea that I was doing this at the time. Obviously, she probably would not have liked it, and so I didn't really tell her about it. I literally am walking around the truck, to the back of the truck, two ARs in hand, middle of the night. I mean, it's just, it's probably like 8 p.m. It's dark, underneath the lights outside of Academy, and all of a sudden, Guess what? My mom walks up and she is pissed somehow, some way, exactly at the right time. Coincidentally, we both ended up at Academy. I was walking out, I had just gotten to my truck as she was walking in, and somehow she had even parked on the exact same row as me. My mom and my grandma walked up, see me with two ARs in hand as I turn around to say hello or figure out who's even talking to me. I look at them, it's them, and I'm like, oh shit, this is not gonna go well. <laughs> and so my mom was like, like, you need to go home, meet me at home, we're gonna talk later. And I was like, uh-oh, okay. We get home and she was pissed. I feel so bad now, but it was kind of funny at the time. She was so, so, so mad. And my argument was that I wasn't doing anything illegal. <laughs> And I mean, I get now why she was that way. She was just trying to be protective over me. Obviously, no 17-year-old needs to be flipping guns, but that's what I was doing. That's, uh, I don't know, that's just part of the dumb things that I was doing growing up. So I kind of slowed down after that. And honestly, I needed to slow down anyways. I had already had so much money saved from what I had done at the time for how much I had been doing. And uh, yeah, she was right. She really was. She was very right. She was like, well, what happens if someday you're selling to somebody and they decide that they don't want to pay you and they just want to pull out a gun and shoot you somewhere. And that's a very valid thing. She was right. At the time, though, I didn't think that that was a reality. I didn't think that stuff like that could actually happen in the world. I was just ignorant. I can't even remember what my train of thought was. See, this is why it's so hard to ride because I really get into riding on these bikes. I completely forget about my story that I'm supposed to be filming. <laughs> I just completely lose track. My mom was really upset with me. I understood at the time, or at least I thought I did. I really didn't, but I do now. And so I stopped selling guns for a little bit. I ended up, like I said, I had saved up enough money through flipping cars, flipping guns, flipping motorcycles, flipping subs, literally just whatever that I could. Buying and selling, I had saved up enough profit to go to college. And 
uh, yeah, I started doing it again. <laughs> it was actually really bad now looking at it because I could have gotten in so much trouble. Like seriously, so much trouble. But anyways, me and Daniel were flipping guns and we were living in a dorm. And that is all the specifics that I'm gonna tell you. Just understand that it was really dumb. <laughs> but again, I needed money. I wanted to save some more money so that way I could get ready to buy a house. And I know that sounds stupid. I was 18 years old. Why would an 18 year old want to buy a house? It was actually kind of smart. I was wanting to buy a rental house because I, did, I didn't want to personally live in the house. I wanted to keep living in the dorms or living in an apartment or something, but I wanted to save up enough. I was almost there to buy a house, a small house around here. So that way, it, we, I mean, I don't know if you guys even know this, but we live in like a big college town. And so rental houses are very, very valuable here. Everybody needs a rental property because of how many students there are in the school. This is where my luck ran out. And this is why I haven't done it since, at least not on that scale. <laughs> me and Daniel one day, I had some pistols posted for sale and a guy messaged me and he's like, hey, I'll take every one of them. And I was like, what? And this was probably my biggest deal at the time. I want to say it was like, I don't even remember. I want to say it was actually like eight pistols, eight or 10 pistols maybe. And I was making a good bit of money off of it. So I was really excited. And the guy told me he was a collector and this is that. And he had cash in hand. And I was like, okay, cool. Send me some money of the cash real quick before I get going because we were about to go on like an hour drive and I didn't want to get ghosted because that happens a lot when trying to sell stuff so so he sends me a picture of all this money laid out on the bed and so just to be safe because I was already sketched out because this could be my biggest deal I wanted to make sure that I was not about to get robbed or anything so I told him I was like all right cool can you send me some pictures of the back as well and he's like yeah sure that's so weird to be able to talk in my hands and still ship every time that I have ever done a gun deal I have always for sure met in public every freaking time this time included I told the guy I was like yeah I'm good with it as long as you don't mind meeting public he's like yeah sure that's fine we leave and we get to this public place that we're meeting at which was i believe it's like a walmart it's like a neighborhood walmart the smaller one i get out and i've got a pistol in my waist i carried a pistol everywhere that i go i still do uh, but at the time i had it open i had it on the, my waist and open carrying that way if anything was to go south the guy knows that i'm carrying and the people that i had brought with me i had two other guys with me they were also carrying so that was basically the the widely known signal of don't fuck around this is a serious deal, whatever, you know? So the guy pulls up, we're talking, we're talking, whatever. Kind of sketchy guy, really sketchy guy. It was odd because whenever I say he pulled up, he actually did not pull up. <laughs> he, he walked up. He didn't have a car, apparently, is what he told me. And that he had walked. Holy shit, this is some roads here. I've never been down here. But apparently he had walked to come to meet us. And I was like, what? And like, yeah, dude, I live right down the road. Um, but I walked over here just to come and meet you, whatever. I was like, okay, well, no problem, whatever. So I showed him all the guns and whatever. He's like, okay, cool, cool, yeah, I like them. You got the money with you? He's like, yeah, it's right here. And he showed me an envelope and he was like, but uh, if you don't mind, man, could you drive me down the road to my house and I'll give you the cash there? And I was like, uh, why? And he said, well, dude, mainly just because, honestly, uh, I'm a black guy. You may not believe it, you may not know, because I understand you're not black, you're Mexican or Hispanic or whatever. <laughs> Nobody even knows what race I am, it's funny. He was like, as a black man, I'm worried about a cop pulling me over and wanting to look in the backpack or whatever and him finding a bunch of guns. I just don't think it'll go well. And honestly, I kind of understood that. And I was like, damn, no, you're right. So he gets in the back of the truck and we drive down to his house and we get out. It was, by the way, I meant to mention that it was him and his younger brother. It was two guys whenever he came and met me. And I had two guys with me, so it was two of them and three of us. It's going to be important in a second, I'll explain. I know it seems pointless to explain this, but it will. It'll make sense. So I pull into the guy's driveway and get out. He hops out of the back of the truck. I've got the bag of guns. I was like, yep, here you go. And I handed it to him and he handed me the envelope of cash. And it literally, it was absolutely freaking insane. Absolutely crazy. Like that, everything changed. And as soon as he had his hands on that bag, he literally threw it to his younger brother and took off running. And I was like, what the hell? And so the younger brother, you could tell had gotten left out of the loop of what was going on and so I opened up the envelope and I am not even kidding I really wish that I would have been recording and had a YouTube channel back then I open up the envelope inside of this envelope is all of these hundred dollar bills that were printed <laughs> off of a home printer and then laminated and cut out to look like real money sitting in an envelope and 
and I realized what was going on. And so I see the guy running down the road and I look left again after I'd already looked down at the money. And this time, whenever I looked left, he was not by himself. Turns out that around the side of the kid's house that we were meeting, he had like, I don't know, probably about five to 10 older guys that were with him and all produced handguns and uh, were loading them, racking them, chambering, whatever you want to call it, as they were walking up and running up towards us because they saw that the kid still had the backpack and they were all yelling at him, telling him to come on, come on, come on, run, run. And I told the kid, I was like, I hate even telling this story because it really does suck that I was even put in this position. Uh, I told the kid, I was like, give me that bag right now. And he completely froze. The guys were running up even closer to me and they're yelling at him and you could tell that the kid was in his head having a complete moral battle and it honestly sucked. They didn't tell him what they were doing. They were just assuming that he was just going to grab the, bun the bag and run because he was scared and they would get the bag and they had guns to keep me away and probably shoot me. <laughs> the kid I now see has a gun on his waist as well but he it was obvious that he didn't I don't know I'm not even gonna say it was obvious that he didn't plan to but I will say it was a very weird situation I didn't know what to do and so I pulled my gun. Worst situation I've ever been in. And um, yeah, so I told the kid that he needed to give me that bag. I did not want to get shot. I hope he understood this. I need that bag. And from at first, whenever he was clinching the bag, not letting me have it, it completely changed. And he let me have the bag and he literally looked at me and was like, I'm sorry. I looked left and all of the guys are now running at us with the guns drawn, aiming at us. I thought that they were gonna start shooting at any second. So I jump in the truck, slam the door and we peel out. And uh, yeah, I don't think that we were, I can't even really remember. This was three years ago now, but I don't believe that anything hit the truck. Um, I don't even know for sure if they even shot. Yeah, it was a, it was a very big clusterfuck though, to be honest. But like all of this stuff that I just now explained, it it was like the craziest, most scary thing that I have ever seen unravel in front of me. But in slow motion, that is what I saw. I saw the guy hand me the envelope, take off running, throw the bag to the kid that he was with, his little brother. I open the envelope, see fake money, look to the left again, see a bunch of guys running from the side of the building and pulling guns out of their waistband. So I told the kid to give me the fucking bag and he didn't. He was clinching there, trying to decide. I could tell if he was gonna run with it or if he was gonna whatever. It was just like stage fright. He looked like a deer in head Light. I look left again, see the guys running even closer to us now from around the house. And so I pull the gun on the kid, uh, get the bag back, and I take off. Like I said, it was a horrible fucking day, honestly. It was like easily one of the worst days that I've ever had because that is the last thing that I ever want to do. I do not ever, ever want to pull a gun on somebody, much less have to shoot somebody over getting robbed. Don't, everybody makes mistakes. I have made stupid mistakes and that's what sucks the worst is that I don't ever want to be put in a position where I have to end somebody's life because of a mistake that they are making and that was what I was put in at that point on that day and it really did freaking suck dude. I wish that that day would have never happened. Not because I feel like I did anything wrong necessarily but more because because it, it just sucks to try and give somebody the benefit of the doubt and do everything in your power. Uh, I don't know. I just, I don't know. Anyways, we leave from this event and from this place where all of this happened. It was Daniel and a friend of mine, Tyler. And we were in Tyler's truck. I was in the passenger seat, Daniel was in the back seat. Tyler was driving. And as we're driving away from them down the road, I call the police, obviously. First thing that I need to do is call the cops, tell them what happened. I call the cops and I'm not even kidding. This was the, I just, it was mind blowing. Let me tell you what happened. I call the cops and I tell them, hey, I just almost got robbed. I was meeting up with a guy to sell some pistols. A bunch of guys jumped out with guns trying to shoot at us uh, to get the guns from us. They handed me fake money. I ended up having to draw a gun on someone and I got the bag back, but I wanted to let them know and I wanted to file a report for what happened and I'd like to hopefully go out there. Holy shit, that was gross. They were like, so did the stuff get stolen? And I was like, no, it did not. And they said, okay, well, what are you calling for? And I was like literally shocked. And I was like, well, I'm calling to, ex I don't know, I guess I'm calling to let you know that we almost just got fucking killed. And they were like, well, if there's not technically a crime, long story short, pretty much that kind of stuff happens around there all the time and they get calls about this and that, but there's no way for them to enforce it unless there is something that is actually stolen or whatever. And if not, they pretty much told me that they had bigger stuff to focus on. So they didn't 
to let me go. And I had never in my life spoken to the police about something that serious. That was one of the most serious events that I'd ever had happen in my life, honestly. Completely scared to death, completely shooken up, and their only response was, we got bigger stuff to worry about. And uh, they are right. I mean, there is stuff like that that honestly around that town that I'm talking about, or that city that I'm talking about, it is, it is regularly rated to be one of the most dangerous cities in America. And uh, I definitely see why. It completely makes sense. I just didn't know this at the time, and I thought calling the police would be the, the solution for that, but I guess not. And so after that day and that confrontation and everything that happened, that was the last time that I have tried to go anywhere and buy or sell guns from anybody that I did not very closely know. It's hard to explain really the feeling that I had in my stomach and the feeling that I had in my heart and everything. It's just, I, God, man, I don't know. And so this is really, I think, the first time that I have publicly told this story in my entire life. In fact, I don't even know if there is anybody else that knows about this story, except for more, I mean, I would probably count on one hand the people in my life that know this story. That day completely changed me. I don't trust a single soul for anything anymore. I carry a gun every single place that I go now. I will not meet up anywhere except for a public place. I don't give a shit if you're black, white, purple, and you're worried about the police, the Air Force, or the, uh, the Vietnam Army. I don't care. I'm, we're meeting in a public place, and I'm not going to try to help anybody out anymore <laughs> because it's just not worth it. It sucks that it has to be that way, too, but that's just... That's the truth to it. That is why I stopped selling guns. And that is my story of being a, 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 what do you call that? An arms dealer to a small scale, I guess. And that was the last bit of, uh, of guns that I had sold. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. Comment down below and let me know if you think that I was right or wrong. I, I don't even know. I truly do not even know. I am super, super glad that everything went the way that it did and did not go any worse. I'll just say that. I was very, very much so expecting to have a lot of people hurt that day. And I didn't know if it was going to be me and my friends or a combination of me and my friends and some other people. It, it was just a horrible feeling, truly, to be put in that. So I tried my best, I guess, honestly. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Make sure you smash that like button. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Was I an idiot for selling guns? Probably, but it helped me get to where I was and I'm glad I learned my lessons young and I'm glad that I learned my lessons without having myself get hurt or anybody else. So make sure you subscribe and turn notifications on if you have not already. We've got a lot of cool stuff coming for you guys. Comment down below and let me know what you actually would like to see videos on for the future and I'll make sure to take those into account. We have these little idea brainstorming sessions so we take into account everything, all the comments that we read, all that good stuff about videos that we'd like to see and whatever. And that's where we come up with all of our video ideas. So you'd be surprised. You guys have a lot more input on the videos than you think. So I appreciate it.